Hey friends, welcome back to the Godspeed Garage. Fair warning, if you are a body man or a painter, this episode is sure to make you cringe. So all you keyboard commandos out there, get ready, fire away. So the paint process is kind of a hurry up and wait kind of a game where the paint itself has a flash time where you have to wait for the paint to reach a certain stage before you can apply a second coat or a top coat. There's a whole lot of prep that goes into it. There's a whole lot of cleanup. It's actually my least favorite thing to do hot rotting. I would much rather build and fabricate. Painting is kind of one of those things that if you're a painter, more power to you. That's just not really my thing because uh, the prep and cleanup and sanding is just, it takes a long time. So, uh, but the end result is only as good as your preparation. The name of the game is clean, clean, clean. So I'm going to show you a few things that are going to help you get a halfway decent to relatively professional looking paint job just out of your garage. So I went ahead and painted inside of that lower cavity down there and the upper cavity. I used the Eastwood internal frame coating, which is pretty good stuff. It comes with this nozzle right here that you attach to the can and you can feed that down inside of the cavities here. Since I already drilled the hole for this center part on the bottom down here in the middle for an extra drainage of water that might get up in there, I had enough length on the nozzle to do that whole thing. Up here on the top section though, I already welded it up, but that was a hole uh, there in the middle as well so I can get to that entire upper section with the internal uh, frame coating. That'll basically coat the inside so it'll prevent it from rusting any further. Okay, so now we're going to mix up some primer. I like to use the epoxy primer. This stuff's from Eastwood. This is a direct to metal epoxy primer and this stuff is actually really good. So it's a one to one two stage deal. So one part of the actual primer, one part of the catalyst. And then I'm gonna add some reducer too to get it in my spray gun. So since my spray gun holds about 20 ounces or so, so 20 ounces is right there in 600 mils. So if you follow that around, there's the eight there, kind of the five there, sort of the four there, and then we're about where the five is right here on the one to one mark. So since I'm going to add some reducer, I may want to go just shy of the five because this stuff, once you mix it together, you kind of have to use it. But my man Kevin Tates, who has all kinds of how-to videos and painting videos online, showed us kind of a non-factory authorized trick where you could put this in the refrigerator and make it last for a couple more days. So it might be okay then to mix a little bit more than your cup will hold. So what you're looking for when you're mixing this for your paint sprayer, I do the three second drip rule. When you stir it and then you pull your stick like this and you count to three, if it actually starts making drips, see there made it drips right there. If it does that in three seconds, then you're probably good to put it in your sprayer. Let's try it. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three, four. We're about four. So I might add just a little tiny bit of reducer just to get that down to about three seconds. All right, so let's talk surface prep. I like to use the Eastwood pre-painting prep, which I put in a spray bottle here. Just makes it easier for even coating. Spray it down good, wipe it down good, and then you'll use a tack cloth to get up any remaining particles that may be on it or anything left behind by your rag. 
All right, you can see how much dirt was left behind after spraying it with that uh, painting prep. So you wanna turn your rag a bunch of times and just get new surfaces to keep getting it, all the dirt, everything off of it. Again, when you're painting, especially when you're not using a paint booth, clean, clean, clean is the name of the game. You want to be as clean as possible. That way your paint has the best chance to stick to the metal. Okay, so now that there's black on there, you can see all the flaws. This is the inside of my tailgate, so I didn't really care about fixing the little tiny dings and dents on the inside part, because when it's shut, you won't notice. And it's a shop truck, not a show truck. I'm going to just leave it like it is, but the black does expose all of your imperfections. So if you're trying to make it look nice, then make sure you do the due diligence of making it smooth before you put paint down. Now you can apply spot putty or the high build uh, filler primer over the top of the epoxy primer, which is what I'll do on the outside part of the tailgate, but not so much the inside since I don't really care about the inside. Okay, so it's been a couple of days uh, since I got the epoxy primer down. I let that completely dry and cure. And I got a couple of layers, a couple of coats of the filler primer on there. That would be your next step, just to kind of fill in any scratches or imperfections on this tailgate when I was laying down the epoxy primer. I got kind of thick in some areas and there are some runs. But this filler primer is meant to smooth everything out. I admittedly cheap out when it comes to filler primer since you're going to sand most of it off anyway. What I use is this primer by Duplicolor and I just order like a case of this stuff. You want to get it on there pretty thick. I do a couple of thin coats and then just a really sort of medium heavy wet coat on the spots where I know there's going to be some deeper scratches and then the next step would be to put a guide coat on here and the guide coat is really meant to serve as an indicator to how much you're sanding off in the high spots and the low spots. I like to use the uh, wet sanding method. The way that I do it is I use a spray bottle that I fill full of water and I just spray it down, sand a little bit, spray it down, sand a little bit. And I also have a bucket of water that I soak the sandpaper and I use a little pad for the sandpaper so you don't get finger lines in it. If you sand off the guide coat, but you notice there's still some guide coat on there in certain spots, that means that's a low spot. You obviously don't really wanna get all the way back down to bare metal. The black epoxy primer underneath this gray will kind of indicate that's probably as far as you should be standing for that. So, Okay, so now it's time to apply the color coat. The color I'm going to use is this Ace Rust Stop Satin Black. Now this stuff is awesome. I've tried it on a bunch of rusty panels and of all the different things I've tried, this one seems to work pretty well. It's not automotive paint, but it works great. I thin it with this naphtha, and again, just enough to get it to drip in the three seconds. I like to apply three thin coats of the color, waiting about 30 minutes in between coats. Then I let it cure for a couple of hours, and then I will do some color sanding. It's just some light sanding with 1600 grit paper, just to kind of scuff it up a little bit before I apply the clear coat. The clear coat I like to use is this Duplicolor Paint Shop and I'm going to use the matte clear on my truck since this is just a little hot rod shop truck. And again I'll apply three thin coats and this stuff, the flash time is really quick. It's only about 10 minutes you need to wait between coats. It's time, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time you came around. This time is time, this time is time, this time you let me down. It's 
final product not too bad for just painting out of my garage not using a paint booth it's not perfect but it's pretty good for the do-it-yourself or at home this doesn't turn out too bad as long as you again take your time and put all your effort into sanding and prep and keeping it as clean as possible all right so it's time for me to get this thing on my truck and take it out for a test drive Thanks for watching. Be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends, comment, all that stuff. And we'll see you next time.